Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is Krzysztof Pomorski and I would like to give some a brief seminar on uh, fundamental approach towards uh, position-based qubit and that is also named as Vanier qubit in uh, chain of coupled quantum dots in semiconductor. So this is a work which was done in, uh, which was started at University College Dublin and is being uh, continued by uh, by my stay at Krakow University of Technology and also it's, it's associated with activity of my company. So uh, today I will give the prescription how to derive uh, tight binding um, uh, parameters of tight binding model from Schrodinger approach. So that's why I make such name as fundamental description of vanier qubits in a semiconductor. So I, at first I will I was I will describe philosophy of my approach, and later and later I will move towards uh, I will move towards uh, the more complicated formulas that are a bit technical and are also being expressed by my l l l recent archive paper with the same title as the title of this presentation. All right. So first I will define the Vanier qubit. And I will briefly sketch propagator formalism principles, and then I will show uh, how to describe this uh, qubit uh, in Schrodinger formalism. So I will I will use two possible paths. So first path will be the usage of uh, green functions, and so the usage of green, uh, Schrodinger green functions for description of vanier qubit properties, and uh, and also I will use uh, the Tyler series expansion, um, Schrodinger Tyler series expansion expressed by operators, also for the same purpose, and then we can uh, we can compare the, the 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 obtained methodologies and we can uh, think about bigger scale of applications. So, right. So basically, what I named a, a position-based qubit is a system of two and more interconnected interconnected quantum dots with more than one eigenenergy level and uh, those connectivity can be uh, tuned in electrostatic way so what we do observe is oscillations of electron occupancy in the system of such uh, coupled quantum dots all right so so let me move to to the, the to the um example so we have uh, now those days that the, the CMOS technology is is going into smaller and smaller scales. So what we do have is that uh, we have a source and drain in a transistor, and this will play role of quantum dot A and quantum dot B, and uh, and we evaporate insulators. And on the top of those isolators, we have a gates, and we can apply voltage to the gates. So those voltage will tune the connectivity between quantum dot A and quantum dot B. And in particular, this uh, this connectivity, uh, this connectivity, uh, well, uh, a, can be uh, regulated in a wide range of parameters. So uh, the typical channel length between quantum dot A and quantum dot B is around 10 nanometers. And, uh, and the philosophy is the following. We, um, we inject a single electron to quantum dot A or to source of, tra of transistor. And then the, 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 the electron, there's electron presence and then this electron tends to tunnel to quantum dot B, so it, it moves back and forth. So there is there one can observe characteristic oscillations of occupancy of electron among quantum dots A and B. So this is characteristic for a single electron, but this also could be characteristic for many electron system. So actually, actually in the in the conducted considerations. What we have is that uh, that we we can the, the conducted considerations are formulated in such language that it's relative, that is easily extendable 
to, uh, towards many interacting particles. And so in principle, we can go beyond the scheme of single electron, which is a good thing because, because in nature, we should encounter different situations. All right, so this is, this is uh, our system. So this is quantum dot left, uh, left and, and, and right. And, uh, and then we can encode the presence of electron by block sphere. So we can also imprint the phase difference as well as we can, uh, we can have the, the, the ratio of probability. So if, if, if quantum dot left is, is fully occupied by electron and there is no presence of electron in quantum dot B, we we are on the north pole of this of this block sphere, and if this quant this electron is moving towards right, it's on the right side, then there is uh, there is um, presence of electron in B. So we have south pole. So 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 in this qubit, this there is characteristic uh, movement along the block sphere. So it's a natural feature of su such system dynamics. So, uh, so, so it turns out that it will be very useful to use the concept of localized wave function, which and we borrow this concept from we borrow this concept from uh, from condensed matter physics. So, uh, so simply simply saying, we um, uh, we can. And always decompose the wave function of electron uh, into superposition of two wave functions, uh, and what and one is in, uh, is is having this electron maximum electron occupancy on the left side, and another is having maximum occupancy of, of electron on the right side. So it's quite remarkable to to recognize that the pointed system has um, tuning possibility. And uh, this tuning possibility is done by the chain of uh, semicond uh, of nanowires, electrical nanowires, and uh, and this chain, this chain. Uh, so 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 everything can be scaled into very small dimensions. So that's quite a unique feature. And since uh, the usage of magnetic field for a control of qubit. Yes, it's less noisy, but at the same time, is is time is is consuming a lot of space. And if ever, if if somebody have the chance of of knowing the chance of knowing and the transport uh, superconducting qubit, uh, he or she knows how much space it takes. So basically, we have we can have the chain of possible effective potential uh, that is seen by a single electron moving between a quantum dot A and B. So this can be achieved with, with various voltage uh, biasing of different gates, as you can see here. Yeah. And then and then and then we can we can attack this problem. And it turns out that there are two possibilities, two formalisms that are somehow um, that are somehow available here. So first formalism is uh, the formalism of of Schrodinger equation, obviously. And uh, but there is also slightly alternative approach that is using tight binding model and uh, simplistic tight binding model. Where is the localization energy and hoping energy? And what is uh, important is that for very large integration uh, of many qubits, the usage of Schrodinger equation leads to integral differential equations, which are very hardly solvable. And the usage of tight binding model becomes simply algebraic model. And so it's much simpler. And more efficient in usage, nevertheless, that's done for the sake of accuracy. So, in this in this work, I would like to give justification of usage of tight binding model from Schrodinger equation. So, to show exactly what all these parameters mean and what's their real 
a range of values. All right. So basically, uh, if you apply a different effective potential as, as given here, you can use um, you can use uh, tablets matrix approach, and then you can get different wave functions for different eigen energies. They are named by PC one, PC two, PC three, PC four, PC five. So you can see this those distributions, and uh, and then it's quite naturally that you can assign, you can construct, for, for example, you see that C, C1, C1 is localized on the left quantum dot quite clearly. And this is because here is a minimum of, of potential. So this wave packet is, is very much localized on, on, on the left side. And C2 is, is localized on the right side. So basically, just in this this particular context, you is very easily you can in, in easily identify which function is maximum localized or is close to maximum localized function on the left or right. All right. So um, so that's that's how, that's how it is. So that's uh, just simple, simplistic, or simple Schrodinger wave function methodology. We, we know how to do it. That's not so big deal. All right, so now let me move on. Okay, so now, now, yeah, let us move. Let us uh, describe less, slightly less obvious model. This is tight binding model. This model can be seen as the generate version of Hubbard model, by the way. So uh, simply. Um, uh, in Hubbard model, you have nodes of lattice, and you have hoping between nodes of lattice, and uh, so you can move between two points of lattice, and uh, and then what is essential is that here we have only two lattice points: this left quantum dot and right quantum dot. Obviously, we can have more than than those two, but it's good at first to assume those two nodes and uh, and then there is associated energy with presence of electron on the left quantum dot ap1 and uh, associated um, uh, localized energy with presence of quantum of electron quantum dot right this is ap2 and there is a hoping energy so this is there is a hoping from from one to another quantum dot. And so there is TS12 and TS12 conjugated. So this is hoping energy. So this is this, this there is in a way energy that participates in electron movement. That's how it is. All right. And then and then we have uh, and that's so this is Hamiltonian. And then it's naturally that this is change of dynamics of quantum state with time. This is E h bar d over dt the quantum state. So this is this this is a quantum state. So here the the, the state is spent. Uh, so there is a for a case of isolated quantum system, there is um, the normalization condition that. Electron presence is quite naturally distributed between two nodes. That's how it is, right? All right. So, um, and then, and then, it's kind of necessary to move from from uh, Vanier function to Schrodinger equation. So Vanier function. So it will be for our particular reasons. It will be recommendable to consider only time independent Hamiltonian at first. In such case, the, you can always write this wave function of electron as superposition of left Vanier function and right Vanier function. And Vanier functions are orthonormal, ortho, 
are normalized and orthogonal at the same time. So in a way, we, we, we say it's are orthonormal. So that's expressed in, in such fact. So, so obviously by projection of this upper of this uh, bra on this uh, C, one can get the alpha and beta coefficients. All right. So, so that's the, actually this projection is just written here: how to obtain alpha and beta coefficients. And now, and now. And now we have this prescription for AP1 and AP2 localized energies. So here we have Hamiltonian, that is uh, kinetic energy, has kinetic energy and, and, and um, potential. And then there is Vanier function of, of left quantum dot and Vanier function of left quantum dot, so this is for AP1, and in case of AP2, we have right linear function for right quantum dot. So, so in a way, this is this is nothing else as total energy localized on left quantum dot. That's, that, that's kind of, um, that's kind of uh, expressed here in that way. But, but mostly on the left quantum dot because we have the integral from minus to plus infinity. So, so you, one have to pay attention to some uh, details associated with this formula. So that's how it's written. And uh, and now um, now we have this hoping uh, between two neighboring quantum dots. Well, right now we only consider to quantum dot system. So we have a Hamiltonian and we have VL and VR or VR, VL. So that's also expressed by such integral. All right, so, so, so I want to show how this, what's the formula for AP1 AP and TS12. Just take, if we only use a Schrodinger equation, so, so I'm I'm bit I'm generalizing the situation actually because because this um, situation which is written here is essentially done for time independent Hamiltonian time independent Hamiltonian and um, and I, I will generalize the situation for the case of time dependent Hamiltonian basically my approach will be able to tackle almost any, any type of electromagnetic situation that, 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 that can happen. So just be aware of that. All right, so let me move on. All right, so, uh, so th this is just flavor of tight binding model. And now I'm, I'm, I'm going to move to philosophy. So this is a philosophy of tight binding model. Uh, it's worth of saying that this doesn't have to be a single electron by the way. So this Vanier functions can be also identified for more than one electron. Uh, so we can have n body, n body system that is distributed among two quantum dots and we can study its properties, how, uh, how, do, how it does behave. All right. Okay, and so before going into details um, of derivations that that is a bit time consuming and a bit tedious, um, I'm going to briefly give you a schedule of propagator formalism that will be useful in our considerations. So, uh, so how, 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 so, so. So, so when, when we are dealing with um, Schrodinger equation in two-dimensional space, we can always write such equation as equation as, the, uh, as, as this equation. So basically, let us first forget about C. So in, uh, if C is set to zero, we have this operator acting on a wave function is simply equal to zero. 
So obviously, uh, since V is in general case non-zero, well, for non-trivial solutions, only only the solution of uh, of a Schrodinger equation is fulfilling such condition, right? And now I'm using the simple trick. I, I, I'm setting here the small constants C. So we have this operator acting on FC. And so this is expressed by O operator. And the result of action of O operator on a wave function can be one, two, or many, many dimensional is the, uh, the constant C times this wave function. And having such defined operator, now we can uh, um, identify the, the equations that needs to be fulfilled by a propagator. But at first, let us pre-assume that we have a wave function, C, that is uh, um, dependent on, on the position uh, x2 time 2. And this is being correlated with a wave function that is at position uh, x, x1, t1. And then uh, there is uh, four, four variable function, g, that will be called later propagator. And there are two integrals in, in time. So we basically see that this state on the left side is depending on the state on the right side. And then we we see that all time instance in in the past and in future does matter. That's that's how it's written. So so we can also rewrite the the this um, in a sense this equation as first we eliminate the presence of particle at C uh, x1 t1. So that's why we we use normalization condition, and then we we uh, we create the presence of particle in another place in a way. So we can write it in that way. This 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 this, this the whole operator, right? So this this has to do with creation and annihilation operators in in some sense. But this is being uh, kind of captured by the properties of by the properties of uh, these wave functions. And um, yeah, so this is, uh, and then uh, just if we act with this operator on this wave function, we will get inevitably the equation of motion for, for propagator that is written in a much more convenient way than here, because such definition as given here is a bit, bit more tricky. And this uh, and this definition, so this is operator O acting on a G, is equal to C times uh, the delta Dirac function t t two minus t one times the delta Dirac function x one minus x two. Well, mm, so you have here this this O as given as operator here. That's that's so this is bit. Mm, so it is a bit more straightforward. Nevertheless, it's not that trivial definition of such wave function. And it's very tricky because, because if you, so here we have this uh, Dirac function is distribution. So it's either plus infinity or um, plus minus infinity or zero. So it's it's there and the same is, is so this is a bit tricky, and also this operator if you if you look carefully if c is set to zero, those term this is minus kinetic energy minus potential energy is equal to to e h d over d t, so in a very real way this is a zero. So if you divide both sides by this operator if you take inverse operator. You will get more or less division by zero times this peculiar Dirac uh, the distribution. So this is object that is not so easy usable 
especially in numerics, at least in uh, position representation. So it's a bit more tricky. All right, so yeah, then we apply this equations of motion, as I have mentioned. We have this operator acting on a wave function and the result is C times this wave function as it is. And yes, this, this is actually the derivation of this equations of motion. So this operator O can act on internal on a G and then by such uh, property, this condition, initial condition is fulfilled. So this has to be, uh, so this is equation of motion. That's, that's a proof of that. All right, so um, problem is, yeah, so as I mentioned, there, there is a bit pathological, um, pathological expression of uh, that, that is done here. Um, the uniqueness of my approach is that I simply, you might say this bit, bit semi-trivial, introduce the C constant that can be complex value, uh, real value or imaginary value. But it really helps because it removes this case of dividing by zero. That's a one thing, right? And uh, and uh, makes things slightly more accessible. So basically, we can encounter that we have equation of motion given here by equation 11. Uh, so this is equation of motion for a propagator in a way, right? So instead of, so we, we, we can trace the, the quantum system properties by tracing propagator properties. So there is in the front, there is inverse of this operator acting on such so direct delta function. So this is propagator in time and space. It's worth notif notifying that if we have only propagator in in space, we don't have this, this direct time, time dependent direct function. And if you have only time propagator, we don't have this, this, this term. So anyway, formally in textbooks is beautifully written in, in such a way, but without the C constant. And so this is nothing else as this uh, E H bar D over DT2 minus the Hamiltonian plus C. And there is here. So actually, since those two terms, those operators are equal, this subtraction will give zero. So if it gives zero, this is zero and you can divide both by C and then you can get, so this is textbook issue, but I'm saying why not to write in, in that way? All right, so this is this is textbook issue. And now I'm going to apply this those cases to in in more straightforward way to to uh, vanier position based qubits. Well, before so so I just explained this philosophy of of equations of motion uh, possessed by propagator. And now I'm going to use another trick. So propagator is a heavy stuff, it always works. But now I will use even more tricky approach, which will be which will give much nicer expressions. And this will be very nicely encaps encapsulated Taylor expansion by uh, operators that that can uh, implement shift in time and space. So shift in time can be so. So this is. Uh, symmetric generator gen generators like as Hamiltonian can describe you the system shift in time and the the momentum can give you describe you the system properties in a shift in space all right so let me let me do very few few nice tricks which will be helpful all right so yeah. So we have this uh, concept of shift in time and space in Schrodinger equation. And uh, so what's the philosophy? I mean, uh, let's say it's nothing else than just philosophy of 
two variable style or expansions. Uh, and the way of writing this in compact form. So, so let let me let me first consider c x t zero as a wave function at x coordinate and t zero time, and let me uh, also consider the wave function that is depending on x and t zero plus delta t. So, um, and then we have this operator. Uh, so this is nothing else, just uh, the sequence of derivatives with respect to time. So this is the, the Tyler expansions. We have infinite number of such terms. And then we write it in a very nice way by such operator as, as given here. And, uh, and this operator can be directly translated to a Hamiltonian that we know from quantum mechanics. So this Hamiltonian is uh, operator is uh, can be written here. So we don't have explicit time derivative, but we have a Hamiltonian that is being present here. So we act with such operator on such wave function on such quantum state, and we get a shift in time. And this is valid for any values of delta t under the assumption that all potentials that the wave function becomes continuous in its behavior, which is very reasonable assumption, right? All right, so, so this is how to make translation in time. Now we can make also the translation in space. Well, I only consider here, I only consider here this, uh, how to say the, the translation in space in, in, in x direction, but, but it's very straightforward to, to include two and three dimensions in those considerations. So how it works? Well, again, instead of uh, we can uh, at first consider C at position x0 plus delta x, and there is t0. And so this is, so this is, this is the, the wave function at certain distance from x0. And, and then again, we can use one variable Taylor expansion, and then we can get it. So, so this is rigorous under the conditions of Taylor expansion. I mean, conditions of Taylor expansion uh, procedure. Again, we can we can very nicely encapsulate this Taylor series by very simple, nicely looking operator x minus x zero d over d x zero. Mm, so this is operator acting on a wave function, and uh, and now now we have. It's quite obvious to to translate this to um, momentum operator in a position representation of wave function. So that's written in a, such a way. Well, essentially, it's, it's this operator. Uh, so we have a, a bit analogical situation to this operator. So um, yeah, and now. And now we want to, to have both translation in time and space. And uh, so we apply such operator as given here that quite naturally will incorporate, will incorporate uh, to uh, variable Tyler expansion formula. So this operator is actions on x t zero, and the result of this action is shift in, in any value, by the way, in any, by any value delta x and delta t. So this is rigorous way of, of writing. So uh, and again, since such d over dt variables are not exactly are not exactly uh, how to say natural quantities in quantum mechanics, it's more natural to 
well it again it will be it will be easier to yes you can put momentum and you can have you can have plus momentum and 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 hamilton so the problem that will arise here is the fact that these operators ht0 and pt0 are not commuting in general cases that's that's a bit problematic They're only commuting for the case of particle in a constant potential but they are not commuting for the case of particle in time dependent uh, uh, if potential is, is position dependent and that's 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 this commutation is is not fulfilled all right so yeah so so this is how we we can get this translation in space and time so we have such operator acting on a wave function and and there is a shift in in in, in, in uh, position and in time and uh, then so we have this quantities h and p problem is that uh, how to say an a and so i will i will name this uh, quantity as a operator dependent on tt0 and second one will be uh, this operator b dependent on x x0 and yes and a and b in general case is not commuting and then there is a Zassenhaus formula that is a bit that is a bit tricky but i'm writing it here how uh, you can you can read it there's infinite expansion of so so you have this a and b operators so you can split it into multiplication of such factors and you see the problem is is, is not becoming significant if there is small shift in position and in time is if delta x and delta t zero delta t tends to zero then uh, this is not not a problem uh, so the higher terms will vanish very quickly but if delta x and delta t is definitely not non-small value then you have all these terms so this is s s1 b and this, you have first commutator of a and b and then you have nested commutators in such way and then basically you have infinite series so this infinite series expansion is given by the zosen house formula so this is a bit, bit tricky. All right, and uh, let me conduct some considerations for the case of, uh, for the case of, uh, for the case of uh, tight binding model and see how things are working. Okay. All right. So, so basically, hoping constants derivation. So there's a hoping energy. So we have, so let me define the situation here. So we have a quantum dot. So we have presence of wave. So the quantum dot system of two quantum dots is, is among, uh, for X inter belonging to interval X A, X B. And, and the interval from X A to X A plus X B over two is region one. And the interval from x a plus x b over two to x b is region two. So what I'm saying, I'm asking, what is this? This is a kind of correlation function which I'm, I'm computing here. This is t s one two. So this transfer from region one to two, t one t two, and then you you can say this is there is a shift in time, indeed, and then that's a way of of writing this bit analogical to way of writing from before so there is a wave function at t2 x2 this is by default on the second on the right quantum dot and there is a, a wave function on the first quantum dot this is x1 t1 
and there is Hamiltonian up here. Yeah, so we do nothing else as we compute and right, and then uh, we have uh, what we have is we can also use this representation of uh, for x2, x2 is we can use this propagator that will give you nested uh, chain of integrals, but still you can do it, right? So, and yeah, but but somehow, okay, so this is one direction, this is a bit brutal force direction, but it might, at some point it might work in and particle system for, from certain perspective. And, but let us be more bit philosophical and let us use this concept of shift in time and space as, as expressed here. So we write this right quantum wave functions of, of, of right quantum dot as x1 plus delta x, this x1 minus x, x, x2 minus x1, and the, there's t1 plus plus t2 minus t1, so there is delta t. So it's quite obvious that action of this operator will generate e t2, and then we still we have remaining wave function of such form. All right, so this is equal to, and then we can express, so we, this is energy term, and the same integrals as they were before, but this is integration with respect to position, not with time. So that's why we, we, we can place E2, E, T2 here. And then we have this uh, two operators that incorporate this uh, shift in, shift in, uh, in, uh, in time and in space. <coughs> and now there is this arguing point that's very important that about the order, because as you remember, how it shall be done, it shall be done in such a way that those two operators are under the same, under the same e to the power. And here we, we split it into a sequence of actions, which is not rigorous. <coughs> Yet it can be used as a kind of mm, simplification. So first we have this operator Hamiltonian, but a different time. Yes, so it, it generates such such value, and then we have this momentum operator, and then, then this momentum operator can be its action can be computed. So. Um, I will, uh, so the result of this is, now I'm computing this, uh, into, so, so, so I'm make, making change of variables. So it was convenient to introduce del the delta x variable. So this is nothing else as delta x, and then to conduct, to conduct integration with d delta x. So that's the integration. And yes, uh, we have, so we have this, uh, and now we know how to integrate such wave function, but uh, such a function, let's say. Well, it turns out that the result of this integration is h over ip, this is a momentum operator. And again, the same function of such, such form, and then we have we need to subtract, so, so, it's equal to, and then we have the same term as, and then we have this operator and those two terms. So we have momentum operator in plenty places. Yes, and this is equal to, and now it's very recommendable. It's very recommendable to, to look, so to see that all those guys that are under this integral as, are nothing else as average value of such operator for a particle being in the region R1. So we can forget about this, this 
this integral in a sense that is being so this is average value of of such operator minus average value of such operator so you, you see that how this hoping constant is depending on energies and those those energies can so you see the the, the considerations done here are done for any uh, dependence of Hamiltonian on time and uh, so we have a prescription how this hoping term is depending on the time this is uh, t1 plus delta t in a way and this is delta t and this is t1 and and also this is so 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 so, so this uh, so it does strongly you see the hoping term strongly depends on uh, strongly depends on momentum so this momentum of particle it, it can uh, particle can reflect and this will change this hoping term very significantly so that's that, that that's a bit rigorous result i would say and yes i perhaps i will switch just for a very short time to my archive paper that is unfortunately a bit bit lengthy but uh, but i i somehow uh, somehow want to uh, yeah. right so this is this paper so i already described perhaps it's all right so i described this philosophy of linear functions so this is a bit more complicated uh yeah, you can study and yeah, it's natural to move from momentum to from position to momentum. Uh, so basically wave function at any time instance is depending on such integral nested integrals where V is a potential. That's, that's how it is. The ratio of probabilities between electron occupancy in uh, region X, A, and xa plus xb over two is this is pr1 and yeah, so this ratio of, of two probabilities in between into regions is a bit nasty but it is this expression of, of that form and uh, yes uh, and then then this philosophy of hoping so basically hoping term so basically what I have described, I basically, uh, yes, I described until basically that, that point. And what is important here is that we have, we can use then cosine and sine function. So we have such decomposition. And so we have strong oscillations of this, of this hoping uh, term on certain uh, so this is expressed by sine functions and sine cosine, and we see how it's real and imaginary value are dependent. Uh, perhaps it's uh, so f a kind of final form is that this hoping term is those two energies, and there is arcus tangent of such expression. This is a bit nasty, and so but still, th th this result is is valid under this approximation of very small shift in space and time. All right. And, and then you can have this temptation to go from position, from position dependent wave function into eigen energies uh, wave functions. So, so finally, finally you obtain bit lengthy expression that is that is this one so um so this is for uh, hoping ts12 so this is pr this is uh how to say yeah it's it's is in is given in a such a way that's that's as our spanning coefficients so um yeah you have it in a such form as given here it's a bit complicated. 
Uh, yeah, I don't have much time to go into details. Uh, you can study this this archive paper on your own. You can do the similar tricks uh, with TS21. Obviously, this situation is analogical. And what is more important, you can also do similar tricks with AP1. So there is transition from region one to one. So you basically use the same tricks. You can express this by uh, by green functions, or you can, uh, and then you use, or you can go with these concepts in space, shifting space and time. And um, yeah, so so finally, finally you arrive to such expression that is of such form. So this is basically your also a bit similar to hoping TS one two. <clears throat> so there is angular moment. There is angle, and there is a. Uh, uh, dependence on wave packet average place position in space yeah so All right so that's that's how it is done all right i i hope i was a bit i was a bit informative so that's a bit lengthy but still i hope it's a bit it can be somehow useful. My uh, my considerations and so basically, I I have give you the conceptual and technical scheme of justification of usage of tight binding model, and this is justified by a Schrodinger model. So I guess basically that's it. So if you have any comments or questions, I will be happy to to answer them all right so so there is a bit of literature on this topic apart from this archive that, that is being placed two days ago mm, there's a lot of some literature on this those uh, here presented topics so Lee Karev and Fujisawa and Peta was the first among those that introduced similar to devices there was some some uh, work in similar technology by Leipold, and then this is uh, there is also papers also co-authored by me, various and also in various I'm, I'm just the first author. So, so then you have this analytic on couple single electron lines. So all these details are present, and the seminars of of that sort of type are being uh, are accessible from 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 YouTube channel, and well, there's a bunch of papers you can you can trace once you are interested in this project. Yeah, so so various so, so various model, uh, modeling of quantum gates can be done with use of tight binding models. So that's why its justification really matters, and that's how it is. So I guess I guess that's a kind of that's everything what could be said in such a time interval.